My name is uh, David Cheeseman. I'm a Navy veteran, CISSP, and a student at Franklin University's Cybersecurity Master's Degree Program. Uh, today, I just wanted to do a demo video of the PAM Duress uh, module that I uh, wrote over a weekend. Um, basically, uh, duress is, or duress words, or duress codes, are things that organizations can give their employees or members uh, to signal duress without making anything too obvious. So, and a pluggable authentication module is a convention used in various POSIX flavors of operating systems. So Linux, FreeBSD, Mac OS, um, they, they all have this authentication module scheme where you can have these little modules that do different layers of authentication. So aside from say your normal username and password for SSH, uh, you could also install the Duo uh, module that then does a multi-factor before it lets you log in. And this uh, pluggable authentication module basically allows users to set, um, and administrators to set duress codes. Say, if you're in duress, type in this password, we'll get a notification with your information and we'll be able to try to, to help you. And also it will cut off um, all connections to sensitive data or to um, you know networks that are sensitive and it'll also send us a picture from the laptop's camera so we get a picture of who's uh, typing in the password and uh, maybe it even does like audio recording so that while you're in duress they get an audio feed so all that will happen in the background as the attacker who's coercing the password from this user um, as they, when they log in, that'll happen in the background, but they will see just a normal shell, like nothing's happening. So thus the intent of the duress word to signal duress without signaling to the aggressor or attacker, uh, that you're in duress. So that's the broad overview of the, what it's supposed to look like. So, uh, to start with, uh, all the duress scripts are put in two different locations. So there's uh, Etsy duress.d, that's where global configurations are. That's like, say, um, a script that runs and sends a uh, notification to um, IT uh, through pushover, which I'll actually demo later uh, in this video. Uh, and then uh, you can make a local duress script uh, directory um, within your user account and say, all right, um, duress uh, under tilde duress D, home directory dot duress, throw some scripts in there. Maybe if I know an attacker is trying to attack my machine and I have core intellectual property for my company, I want to delete that stuff before they drop into their shell. So it'll first run everything in the global configuration, then it'll run everything in the user configuration. Um, and then it'll finally drop the attacker into a shell. Uh, duress signing uh, is the process of signing these uh, scripts with a password. And this ends up being relatively simple uh, for a couple of different reasons. Um, duress sign basically takes the, the script in question, hashes it with SHA-256, then it takes your password and uses that script's hash as the salt. And in the end, you have this hash. So if the password doesn't match, the hash isn't going to match. If the script has been modified, the hash isn't going to match. Um, additionally, it's going to enforce some user mass. So right here, it's saying 600, uh, 650. That's not correct. Uh, basically, the authorized, um, the authorized modes are 500, 540, and 550. So that uh, basically allows users and groups to share um, uh, address scripts. Now, the reason this is so simple is because you need to be able to change duress codes easily. Um, you obviously don't want them in plain text and you don't want somebody to be able to tell if you're using a common duress script for one of your local duress scripts, you don't want that to be obvious. So let's say uh, IT tells me that if anytime in, I'm in duress, type in cake batter cookies as your password. Uh, all one word, cake batter cookies, and we'll know that you're in trouble and the attacker won't know anything the wiser. And I want to create that script that also um, deletes my stuff anytime I type in a duress code. So I can only really give the attacker one password. So if the notify IT script is signed with cake batter cookies, I can sign mine with cake batter cookies as well. And then 
with the rest codes, if somebody leaves the organization or group, you need to change them because now you have somebody outside the organization that knows the duress code. So you want to be able to easily change them. So if you do, you just have to use this utility again to reassign the script. So IT changes it. So now it's not uh, cake batter cookies. It's, you know, uh, Rick and Morty or something like that, like Rick and Morty. That's the, that's the new uh, duress code. Um, then the users can go back and resign as well. Uh, so really simple, straightforward, salted password authentication up again, authentication mechanism for the scripts. And here's how it's configured in PAM. If you're not familiar with PAM, uh, I'll give you kind of a quick overview. Basically, the PAM Unix module accepts the username and password. And if it succeeds, it skips the next two. So it'll skip PAM duress and it'll skip PAM deny. PAM denies the one that gets called when you're not authenticated. And then uh, in this case, we're at we're moving. Uh, this is how it normally is. It says skip one and it skips over pam deny. We're adding pam duress uh, to the module configuration. So first, it'll try your username and password. If that uh, succeeds, you just log in. If you if it doesn't match, it'll then move down to pam duress, which will grab the username and password that was accepted in by Pam Unix and say, all right, do any of these uh, scripts in the Etsy DRSD or the local uh, DRS directories match the password that was given by the user? If it does, it, it will run those scripts and then uh, return a successful authentication, skip over Pam deny and drop to a shell so that the attacker thinks they're in, but the DRS codes are being run in the background. Um, and then, of course, if none of those matches, it just results in a deny. So if you fat fingered your password or they fat finger a duress code, it'll just deny them. But uh, that, that's the desired behavior anyway. Um, and then this is how uh, scripts are executed, uh, especially by the user. Um, so when, uh, when the script is run, PAM user is set uh, so that scripts that are run in Etsy uh, address D, which is run by root, knows who is trying to log in. That way you can pass that on to other scripts. Um, and then uh, for specific users, it does the su dash, whatever, so it's run as the user. So local duress scripts are run as that user. They are not run as root. Um, there's a diagram, and here's a quick test to make sure everything's installed. So I've got a virtual machine over here. I've got um, all the, uh, the scripts uh, and stuff laid out, or I've already got the repository um, clone. So let's go on ahead and ensure that we have our dependencies. If we do, uh, then we're going to do a make. We're going to do a make install, and then make clean, just to keep things tidy. All right, so that's our. That's the entirety of installation. Now let's do our configuration. So we're going to make the configuration directories. And then now we need to go in and make sure that our PAM configuration, I'm not sure, I may have done this beforehand. And to give you a quick overview, uh, PAM D has a bunch of different configurations. The one that applies to across the board is common auth, but you can do this for specific things. So maybe you want duress code, you want the duress thing to only be applicable for su sudo or su. Well, then you can include that in there and leave common auth alone. However, for most cases, you want it to generally apply. So we're going to go on ahead and do sudo vim etsy PAM D common auth. You can see I've already actually entered it in. Uh, if uh, this were unedited, this is the stock configuration that comes with, um, in this case, Debian 10 uh, installation. But you basically change the PAM Unix success from 1 to 2, and then you add PAM duress under it. Um, and give it a success of one because you want to skip over pam deny if that succeeds and go to pam permit if unix succeeds you want to skip over duress and deny down to pam permit and then if both of these fail you want to go to deny so that's the the module sort of authentication path uh, that we're using so now that we've got um 
our configuration setup. Let's go on ahead. We've already made that directory. We're going to create a hello world script. We're going to direct sign that. My address word for this script is going to be hello. And you can have different scripts with different passwords. So maybe you're under duress and you want to clear your browser history or something like that. It could be a duress code for that. Or if, uh, you know, you want to nuke the machine, there could be like an absolute crazy duress code that you use that nukes the machine um, in certain scenarios. Like, you know, it, you can basically get to you can create as many duress scripts as you want and have as many duress passwords as you want. Uh, for the most part, you probably like will have like one global and then maybe a couple individuals. Who knows? Uh, everybody's um, uh, use case will be different. So very important, make sure that you have permissions properly assigned. Uh, this is an optional permission to make the, uh, the uh, signature read only. That hash, that, that file, that dot, SHA-256 file is just a binary hash, so it's 32 bytes. Um, you can edit it with a hex editor if you want, I guess. So, and then PAM test, I got that from the initial tutorial I was reading on uh, to uh, make this. Uh, I'll probably get some attribution in the readme somewhere for that. Uh, it was under MIT license. But PAM user, uh, or go on ahead and do a test to see if this works. So if I type in my regular password, validated. Type in a crap password, not validated. Type in hello, hello world. So there, we confirmed that I didn't break my original password. Uh, it still rejects me if I type in a bad password. And if I use one of my duress passwords, it runs a duress script. So we know that we have a good install. So now let's do a more complicated example. Part of the reason I'm making this and that's to do a pushover notification. So pushover is a service, you can get it on Android. I believe it's just a one and done, buy it, and you have a lifetime license to it. Um, and it allows you to basically send notifications to your phone in the pushover app. Um, and it's really, really useful. I recommend at least looking into it if you haven't before. So I've got my pushover app up. Um, let's go on ahead and start installing dependencies. Uh, so this will use a curl command. Um, this I've already done before starting this video. You'll want to go into your pushover account, create an app, create a, get an app token, get a user key, and put it in root.pushovercreds or some other file. Um, that's basically how you want the standard practice for um, storing secrets in Unix. Um, and by default, the uh, convention, the shell convention used in the module is bin sh. So we're going to use the bin sh method of importing those credentials. So this is akin to source and then that file in bash. We're then going to set it to priority two. Priority two is the nag the user um, flag in pushover. They will, it will continue to send um, notifications every 90 minutes for an hour or every uh, 15 minutes for one hour. Um, until I am, uh, I acknowledge the the notification, and then we're going to craft this as mentioned before. Pam user gets set so that we can um, use that as a variable in these scripts. Uh, has used the duress password hostname, local IP gets the local IP, external IP gets um, gets the external IP from uh, IP inc or no IP or IP info. Um, so. Then we go on ahead and send that command via curl to the pushover REST API. And then best practice, if you've loaded shared secrets with a script, unset those shares uh, or those, those secrets. So let's go on ahead and copy this in cheap. We're going to create a new file because VS Code is now my new favorite shell. And now we've done that. Uh, sudo ch own give this root ownership we're going to move uh, address d most important step that i've forgotten a number of times while recording these videos ch mod 500 there we go and just for good measure oh wait we need to address sign it 
So this one we're going to do help. There we go. We've signed it. And then we'll do this as well. Come on, copy. There we go. So now we should be good. So now let's do sudo pam test my username. Hello. Hello world. We'll get anything over here. But now let's say I'm in real trouble. Help. There we go. Already got the notification. Um, already want see one refinement that I need to make to the script. Because the the attacker just saw a bunch of output. We don't want output. So fat. I want to make sure that that got in there. Okay, good. Yeah, I did the right quit exclamation point to force them to write it, so it changed the permissions real quick. So sudo um, uh, direct sign. So we just changed the script. That means we need to resign it. You'd go through the same process if um, you needed to change the address code. So address D, push over, help, help. There we go. So now we've changed that. Let's just be sure that editing it with them didn't change the permission. So we're gonna go make sure that that is Etsy, uh, address D, and then push over. Make sure that's still 500. So now, if I test it, and I still use the same word, help. I get the exact same thing as if, uh, so this is what it looks like if I type in my regular password. Same thing, but IT gets a notification. And IT will know, it says, Nubia says use the duress password on, and then I guess it didn't get the host name, so. That's a bug in the script that I'll figure out later. And then it's got my local IP and my uh, uh, um, external IP. So they can say, if they're on our business network, what IP are they on? If they are on outside of our network, what's their global IP? So that's the general gist of this. Um, if you would like to contribute to this project under docs, we have a uh, contribution. Um, in fact, I need to change that. Uh, I see it because uh, I, I pulled this from a template as well. Uh, but contribution guidelines, feel free to open up issues for either bugs that you encounter or um, any sort of uh, uh, feature request that you would like. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, all the people that have forked this project and some have already contributed, especially this guy. He um, or she uh, actually got uh, OSX compatibility figured out and really improved the make file. Um, so I appreciate everybody's uh, attention to this project really early on. And uh, um, I'm really excited to uh, bring this uh, project to life. So thanks very much for your time and um, enjoy the, uh, the work.